course, it's the James Krause. We have him back on the program. Uh, supposed to fight. Uh, coming up here July 8th um, against Ross Pearson. But uh, if you've been paying attention to his Twitter feed a little bit or, or any of his Facebook social posts, not he's posting anything, but people are posting to him. James had to pull out of this fight. Um, not because he's injured, not because he's not trained, not because he's not ready. Yeah. Family first. Always family first. Yeah, so this is it's a really weird it's a really weird time for me. Uh man, you know, I really don't even I guess it's hard to put into words I, I guess uh that I you know, I I don't have a history for pulling out of fights even when I'm injured. Uh you know, I always I always try to push through it and uh you know, I can't remember the last time I pulled out of a fight. It's been years. I out of in 50 fights I may have pulled out one or two, uh you know, for serious injuries. Um <clears throat> But yeah, I have some family stuff going on. Uh, I guess you know, without I don't want to definitely don't want to put on a pity party for myself. But uh, my stepdad is having some health issues, and uh, you know he doesn't have much longer to live. They give him uh, anywhere from a few days to a couple weeks to live. Uh, he's got he's got cancer, tumors all over his body. It's you know, but he's been fighting for years, so it's it's not a surprise. But uh, it just recently took a a decline, so. <clears throat> Uh, I have two sisters. One is 11 and one is 20. Uh, and they both live with him. And the 20 year old is obviously, she can, I guess she can handle herself. Uh, she's not able to move out on her own yet, but she, you know, can at least pay for herself. Um, the 11 year old, without diving into a bunch of other personal stuff, you know, she, uh, she's had a rough past couple of years. She's been put into a couple of positions where, uh, you know, she was forced to grow up a little bit sooner than she needed to. Uh, not just not just with this, but with some other things as well. And uh, you know, I, I put I've put, and I think I think you could probably I think you probably know this, Frank, because you've been following me. We've been you know for a long time. I put fighting just about in front of everything for a long time, and I've ded- dedicated myself to the sport for for a very long time. And it's it's really honestly, I put it before my family. I put it before anything very many times, and I and I think. Uh, I think for this one time, I think it's I think the right move is for me to to take a step back from fighting uh, for however long you know whether that be a month, two months, three months, six months. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Um, and then I want to focus on my family because I, I don't have any other family, so they will come. My sisters will come live with me, and uh, you know I'm 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 taking them on. So that's a big you know adding two other people to my family is a big it's a big deal. But you know I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, especially for the 11 year old, she, she needs, she needs, uh, she needs to be a kid again. You know, she hasn't had a chance to be a kid for, for a few years now and she needs to be a kid again and she needs somebody, she needs somebody laser focused on her to, to help her grow as a person, you know? And, uh, I think that, that I'm the only one that can do that really. I'm, and that's just, you know, like I said, there's always going to be fights, uh, MMA is going to be there. And like I said, I've, I've, uh, I've dedicated myself to the sport. And I've I've lost friends over this sport, and uh, you know I've I've turned down many other opportunities for this sport. I've given my life to this sport, uh, my whole adulthood. I've been training. It'll be ten years in October, and uh, you know I think for one this one time, I think it, the right thing for me to do is is take a step away and and uh, take care of my family first. You know it, it's tough too because we are in a uh, when you fight you get paid, when you don't fight you don't get paid. And you're about to take on two two new mouths into your household. So financially, it's a struggle. Of course, most of us that follow you understand you have a gym that's successful, and so you have steady income coming from that. But it's still two new mouths, and two and one one of them at eleven needs rides everywhere. It needs to be taken care of. It needs to go. And you so has to take her shopping. Plus, you have a daughter in your home. Plus, you have a wife in your home. It, it becomes this is a big thing. I actually agree with you that this is the perfect time to do this. You need to do this, especially for your your sister, your younger sister. She yep. still needs time. You know, to, to yeah. be a child. You know, she's eleven. I get I get most girls at eleven have got cell phones and Twitter handles and are on Instagram yeah. or Snapchat, but she needs to be a kid for a little while longer and that, that's good good for you. It's tough to be a man, you know, especially for your sisters. It's usually like, Hey, let my parents handle that, but you're taking on that burden. You yeah. don't have to move, right? Because I know you just bought a house. Your house is No, I just bought a brand new house and it really we 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 seen this coming. We we planned for this. So when we purchased our house, this that was taken into account. So we just bought a brand new house. Uh, you know, we have four bedrooms and in a in a basement as well. So we have plenty of room for them. And uh, you know, I guess for the first time that uh, 
that all that time I spent in the gym working on the business isn't a bad deal, huh? Yeah, right? Right? I mean, we talked about this in previous interviews where it was like, you were taking a lot of your time out to really focus on the business, and now it's your saving grace. It's kind of like, hey, I'm okay. I, I, I don't have to fight. I'm not going to yeah. fight because I have to fight. I'm going to fight because I yeah. want to keep fighting. I don't ever need to fight, and that's what I love about it. You know, I don't, I don't have to fight to pay my bills. I fight because I love the sport and I love competing. And uh, like I said, I feel like this is the right move. And and uh, you know, I feel, I feel it's it's a weird deal because I'm not hurt. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've never felt better. I feel amazing. My weight is good. Um, I'm my my training camp has been flawless so far. You know, and it's I always have good training camp, so it's it's tomato tomato. It's the same thing, but. Uh, I think I was really looking forward to the opportunity. I really, I really wanted to fight Ross, and I, I feel bad for, uh, for Ross. You know, it's, it sucks, man. Tr- changing, changing opponents, and he's got plenty of time. But it's, uh, I want to be known as the guy that will fight anybody. I mean, I will. You know that I'll, I'll fight anybody. I don't. I've never, you know, I've never been the guy to, to pick and choose who I fight. And uh, I feel bad for him, and uh, I feel. Almost like I disrespected him in that way, and I, you know, I, I just can't, I can't, uh, I can't change it, and I, you know, I apologize to him. Uh, I will apologize to him, and I am sorry to him because I know it sucks. You're training for a guy like me, and and there's not too many guys like me in the division, you know. Is he's probably gonna, they're probably gonna switch him to somebody a lot shorter, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, you know, I definitely, I definitely don't want to disrespect him and disrespect the sport, but I feel like this is the this is the time for me to do the right thing. And I haven't always done the right thing in the past. And I've picked this sport over a lot of things. Like I said, I've lost a lot of friends over this sport. And, uh, I think now is the time that I, I, uh, I make this decision and, and help my family out. Now, I've got to ask you, your 20 year old sister, everything's okay with her, right? Cause you said, she said she can pay for herself, but she lives with your dad still. She, she, there's nothing wrong with her where she has to live with your dad. She's just like a college student trying to. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Yes, she works. She works a full time job, and uh, she can support herself. She just uh, is not able to move out on her own yet, you know. So, and I feel like I feel like it's almost my duty to to help her. And like I said, without going into a bunch of other personal uh, things, this is not the only thing that they have going on. You know, it's just the important thing. That's why I'm 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 withdrawing with this fight. Um, but. I think it's like I said. I think it's just a, a a deal where I feel I don't feel like they have anybody to give them the way, and I didn't have anybody to tell me what should be done and what you know where you should go from here and how you should handle this. And I feel like that's my duty as as their brother to say, hey, like this is where this is what you should do, and and guide them almost. You know what I mean? Like I didn't have that, and I had to learn the hard way. And uh, I feel like I need to return that favor to them. I feel like I owe it, I owe it to them to give them a good you know, a good solid future. And see, I know he, most people know you and I, he, you and I talk off camera a lot and I know the full story and you really, for you to be able to, to get yourself to where you're at, the way that everything went down for you previous to, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Like if everyone, if once you get ready to write your book, I'm not going to break the news, but once you get ready to write your book, it's, everyone's gonna be like, wow, D James Krause really pulled his bootstraps up and did a lot of shit that people don't know about. And then you be able to pay it forward now to your sisters is huge. Yeah. I feel bad for Ross is like you do because he's there's no way there's no way to find someone that, that mimics your style. He's gonna have to train for somebody different. But I'm very positive he'll still be on that card. Yeah. But I also know too that once he understands you're pulling out for your family, he's not gonna help hold any ill will towards you. It's not like you're ducking him. You're not like he he's yeah. another guy that that's a gentleman. He comes off a little bit weird with all tattoos and all that and his gruff behavior, but he really is a gentleman and he does understand when stuff like this happens. Hey, it's family. You can't really. You've got to be there to protect your family. That's what you have to do. So that's awesome. That's pretty awesome that uh, that you're able to make this decision. Because I got to be honest with you, at 30 years old, if I had the same kind of situation, I don't know if I could pull out of the fight. One, because I wouldn't have a gym that gives me steady income that allows me to be able to do that. But two, I was so selfish at that age that I was like, "There's no way I got to. I got to get through this. I got to make sure I get to this fight." And you're not, man. You, you yeah. stepped over and stepped up. Yeah, you know, I, I honestly, I don't. I just don't want to. I don't feel like I have any other choice. I, I don't, uh, you know, and I feel terrible, man. I really, it's not my style at all. This is not my, you know what I mean? It's, it sucks. And I'm almost embarrassed, you know, and, uh, I didn't want to make the decision, but my, my, my manager and my coach, they, they just both felt like I would be taking on. Cause I, I don't leave a lot of room on my plate for extra stuff to begin with. 
And then on top of this, you know, he's my stepdad's still alive. So like for now, like to today, I had to take my sister to go see him. I mean, what am, what am I supposed to tell the dude? Like, hey, bro, I know you're on your deathbed at all, but I got practice, so we got to leave. You know, I can't. What am I? You know, what kind of person does that make me? So, uh, like I said, I'm embarrassed by it, and uh, I know I shouldn't be, but uh, it's just not my style at all. And uh, it was a tough decision to make, but I, I really, truly feel like that this is what I need to do. Uh, just period. It's what I need to do. It's what I need to do to make to give to give these two girls the the chance that I had to learn the hard way, you know. And I don't I don't want them to do that because not everybody not everybody can can do do it like I did. And I, I was very fortunate to find somebody that cared about me like that. And uh, you know, like you said, with the other stuff going on, it just it, and it really makes it even more difficult. Uh, but yeah, man, I just I can't I can't I can't pass this one up. You know, I've given I've given so much to the sport and. Uh, to to take a step back and and finally make that second, make MMA second, you know, because I don't do that very often. But I think this is the time to do it. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's kind of the same thing. Uh, family's family, and you know, she knows I would do the same thing for her brothers if if the same you know kind of deal came up. And uh, you know, uh, my wife is she's amazing. She's always been so supportive with everything I do. Um, and, and she doesn't, man, I, you know, as well as I, do, it's, it's, it's so difficult. And, uh, she doesn't give me any grief. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm rarely at home and I'm not getting home till seven thirty, eight 8 o'clock. If I'm lucky, I'm leaving at seven thirty, eight 8 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, she works night shifts. She's a nurse. So there's, man, there's times where literally this will be her schedule. So I have, uh, I have a meeting tomorrow at it's like eight or nine in the morning. I have to look, but she gets off work at 7 a.m. She's going to come home and not sleep. She works seven to seven. She's going to come home, not sleep and watch my daughter while I go to work and while I go do my stuff. And she does that. She's so, she's so supportive and it's so hard to find that. And, uh, she's, always been that she's always been that she's never wavered from that so this is no different she's you know, she trusts me blindly you know what i mean anything i say like if i say hey babe can let's you know let's invest this amount of money in this business that you know nothing about she said, if you think it's a good idea let's do it you know and she doesn't give me any grief for it and and uh you know that's that's hard to find man that's hard to find. So this was no different. I would do it for I would do it for her brothers. I would do it for uh, anybody in their right mind with a half a heart and a family is going to do the same thing I'm doing. And uh, but she's she trusts me blindly, and that's that's so hard to to come by. James, that's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you so glad you have a, a great support system, including not just your wife, but also including your manager and your coaches that were like, "Look, man, it's too much. You got to back out." Because those guys, I mean. They also ride on that payday too. They also ride on being in your corner and being seen in your corner to get more athletes to come in and give them more money. And they have the, the wherewithal to go, look, this is too much for James. You got to pull him out of this one and doing it right. And, and I like this. And I like the fact you listen to your team, that you listen to your coaches and you don't try to butt your head through it. You lay your trust in them. They trust you and that it's going to work out. Like 100%, it's going to work out. It may not be in three months. It may not be in yeah. six months. It might not even be in a year, but it's going to work out. And you're going to be like, you'll be back better and stronger than ever just because of taking this time off and being able to have that dedication to something else besides MMA, it might actually make your MMA better. It might actually make everything yeah. better for you. Man, it, that's why I said it. this. What it's what sucks is God. I feel so good. My weight is great, you know, and that's always been a battle with me. You know that. Like my, I, I literally, man. Last night we had not made the decision yet, but I was stressed out, so I went with. Uh, I just got my black belt yesterday, so I went with my coach. Thank you. I went with my coach and a friend and I went all you can eat sushi. Like I'm still after after a small practice today, I'm still high 170s, which is like I normally don't see as 170 anything until like two weeks before. So I'm way. Below. Well, you got to you got to blame your you got to blame your parents for that one because you're six two, fighting 155. That's your that's your problem. You know, Yeah. Uh, uh, if you were if you were 510, it'd be a lot easier to make weight. Oh, uh, man. It's, I, you know what? I feel like. I, I don't feel like I can fight at 70. My coaches, they tell me, my coach says, hey, man, if you, you can fight at 170. And the 70 guys aren't any bigger than me. They're not like when we walk around, they're no bigger than me. 
but I just don't feel I feel like I give up my best asset and that's my reach. You know, I'm fighting guys like Ross, like five foot eight, and that's those guys go from five foot eight, five foot nine to six foot one, six foot two, and it's like that's my best that's my best asset is I sit behind the jab and I, I pick guys apart from distance. That's my thing. You know that. I've been doing this for years. It's like my my game don't it changes, but that I sit behind the jab. First and foremost, I sit behind the jab, and I, you know, I pick pick at people. That's that's my that's my deal, and uh, I feel like I would lose that. Uh, I don't feel like the punching power. I don't feel like that would be a thing. I don't feel like I'm overpowered because there's no 55er that I'm like, oh my god, he's so strong. I don't ever feel that. But uh, it's tough. You know what? You could use this time off. This is obviously this is me thinking outside the box. You could use this time off to go. I don't want to cut weight anymore. I don't want to spend that kind of time, and because I'm I, I'm forced to being up, I'm choosing. To be forced to yep. being off, I'm gonna go ahead and learn how to fight. How to fight at 170 with guys that have the same reach as me. Now what do I do? And give time for your for your style to adapt. You have that opportunity now, and to put a little bit of size on. So if you're walking around at you know at 80 fighting at 170, now with the new rules, you can only go up to 184 anyway the week of the fight. So you don't have to go. You don't have to gain like 20 pounds like you did two years ago. You've only yeah. got to gain like four pounds, and then you're right in the wheelhouse. I'm walking around at like. Normally, I'm probably like 185 if I'm training every day and I'm eating fairly good. I'm 185 right now. I'm, you know, I've been on a hard diet for the last month, so I'm like I said, I'm 170 after practice today. Uh, but I don't think I don't think 70. I don't think I would be undersized at 70. Look at Masvidal. Masvidal me and Masvidal are the same size. You know, he's doing great at 170. So uh, when I was competing, I was totally against all the, the you know, against the. Uh, uh, the dehydration test and how they're doing the weigh-ins now and how everything came about from 199 going forward yeah. now, how they're doing all this stuff. I was totally against it. Now that I'm refing, I'm 100% for it because I see the damage. I, I see what's it. happening. I think you'd be better up at 170, one, because you can fight a lot longer. You don't have to worry about keeping that weight down and getting those little injuries for yeah. being so light. But two, you'll be happier. Like, you'll be able to come home and, you know, yeah. say, say your, 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 your younger sister and your daughter want to have pizza that night. You're on a diet. You can't really have pizza. But it's like, you know what, I'm at 185 anyway. I'll have a slice and be able to enjoy what they're enjoying without having to go up. No, i got to stay street, you know, straight yeah. vegetables tonight. You know, you can kind of relax a little bit more and it makes home life better. It'll make you happy with the family. Why not try yeah. it, you know? And, you know, I also want to say this. Uh, you know, we called, uh, we called Joe Silva today and we told him. And I was really worried, you know, because it's just – it's a weird deal. You know what I mean? Like nobody pulls out – very rarely do people pull out because of this type of stuff. And it's and it's really like the death isn't the issue with me because we've known this is coming for a long time. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be sad and – but we've known it's coming. You know what I mean? We, we've prepared ourselves for this. and uh, But I've just taken on a lot of extra stuff. So I wouldn't I, – I don't know. I, did, I was scared that they wouldn't understand. And it was the exact opposite of that actually. Joe Silva, uh, my manager called him and my manager Joe says, look, man, he was super understanding. I immediately get a text from Joe Silva after saying, "Hey, man, I'm so sorry to hear that." Uh, and I said, "Man, you know, I really wanted to compete compete for you guys, and I, I apologize. And I know it's an inconvenience because I run a show. I know how big of a pain it ass it is to to you know when somebody pulls out of a fight. I know that." And uh, he said, "Hey, man, don't worry about it. Family first." And then later today, I get a call from from Dave Schaller. He's like, "Hey, man, you know, if you need anything, you just let me know." Like they've been, it's been the opposite of what I thought it would be, and they've been super cool about it. So I'm, I'm very, I'm extremely grateful, you know. And they said, "Hey, you don't worry about anything UFC when you come back. You know, that's nothing changes. You got a job. Don't worry about anything." So that was that was really. I was worried about that, you know. I was worried about how they would, and I don't want to lie to them, you know what I mean? Like it's like, what am I gonna say? I got hurt, and then you know how stuff like that gets out. I just don't. That's not my style, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna we're gonna be honest about it, and they were really cool with it. So that was that was uh, I greatly appreciated that. That's actually good to hear because they're 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 getting a little bit of flack right now because they're valuing the the uh, expansion of the, of the Muhammad Ali Act. Um, obviously, uh, Couture and Kung Lee put it put it out to get the expansion. UFC merely hired another attorney, a law firm, to back it off. So. They're kind of getting a little bit of bad flack, but then they hear like Shola and, and Silver are like, no, immediately to get a hold of somebody. And and not not for nothing, I don't, I don't want you to think this is any kind of disrespect, but you are not uh, uh, a George St. Pierre type. You're not that top end no. level, which you know no, for know sure that. they're calling that guy. But they yeah. called you, they text you. It's like, hey, I'm I'm a you know, I'm a guy that's on the rise. I'm a middle level guy, middle of the road guy, but you guys still call me, still took a minute to text me. Yeah. With three hundred and fifty other athletes they gotta worry about, and for sure. Other crap yes. is happening with them today that they've got to deal with too. But they took – I don't care if it's 30 seconds. They took that time yep. out to specifically get a hold of you, and that's awesome. That's great. It meant a lot to me. It really did. It, it really – it meant probably more than they know to me. You know, because it's – I 
you know, like I said, we've known each other for a long time. It's just not my style, man. I hate this. I, I hate it. And uh, I don't like letting people down. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I'm a man of my word. And, uh, you know, I, I just I just can't follow through with this one. And, it, and it, uh, like I said, it's embarrassing. And it's uh, it's upsetting, but uh, they were very cool about it. They were very uh, supportive. You know, like, like I said, they were the opposite of what I, I anticipated. You know, I didn't anticipate flack, but I just wasn't sure. You know, the unknown kind of made me nervous. But uh, they've been they've been awesome about it, and I can't thank them enough for for understanding. Uh, yeah, it's you know, it's a uh, it's a weird deal, man. But we're gonna get through it, and uh, the show goes on. Your life happens. You know what I mean? It's uh, I, I'm not going to waver at all. I'm still in the gym, you know, doing my thing whenever I, whenever I can. I just, right now, if I need to, if I need to take a night off and go take this girl to get ice cream or whatever, then I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? And that's what you need to do. And I'm, James, I'm so glad that you are doing it. Do not be ashamed. Do not feel bad about yourself. Understand this is what needs to happen right now. And it'll, like you said, fighting will be there. Whenever you come yep. back to it, it's still going to be here. So. Thanks so much, man. Get in there. I know you don't spend that much time with your family, so get your ass inside the house. And uh, we'll, yeah. we'll definitely be chatting via text, and I'll be updating with you every week to see what's going on. But then we'll talk again very soon, too, um, once you uh, get back in training camp and, and start uh, start going back. And hopefully, I'm hoping you tell me, oh, by the way, I'm taking this fight at 170, so 155. <laughs> That's my hope, but we'll see what happens. All right. All right, bro. I appreciate it, Frank. Thanks a lot, man. You got it, brother. Take care. You too.